Hello everyone, thanks for joining me today. My name is Kieran and I am a UK qualified naturopath with a master's in herbal medicine and gastroenterology. Today I'm going to be talking about sea moss. This is a seaweed which is renowned for supporting our gut and our thyroid. But did you know it also shown benefits towards our lungs, central nervous system and helping regulate our blood sugar levels? I'll talk about this and more throughout the podcast. Before I go into the benefits, this type of seaweed has a very interesting history. In Ireland, it naturally grows off their coasts, and it was used during the Second World War as an alternative fertilizer source. This is because it contained high amounts of potassium, also known as potash. The Irish also used it during the Great Potato Famine. This is when the potatoes were infected with a fungus known as blight. The vast amount of nutrients, 92 to be exact, were very beneficial towards helping keep the Irish alive during these critical times. These nutrients have a specific and direct um, influence on a lot of particular organs, particularly the thyroid. For people which are unaware, the thyroid is a butterfly-shaped organ located at the base of the neck. It has a wide range of involuntary functions, such as helping regulate our temperature, our heart rate, and our bowel movements, to name a few. Its main job is to control our metabolism. These nutrients found in sea moss help maintain and keep our thyroid functioning optimally. These nutrients such as iodine and tyrosine are the main components to help create thyroxine, also known as T4. This type of thyroid hormone is inactivated or inactive. It needs to be active, activated by the liver. This is where selenium and zinc, some more nutrients found in sea moss, help encourage that process and help with the conversion. Then the activated form will go out and do its necessary job. Another mineral found in sea moss is iron. This helps with the creation of an enzyme known as thyroid peroxidase. This enzyme is responsible for converting a form of iodine in sea moss called iodide into a form of I into iodine. So to simplify, iodide to iodine. These nutrients have also shown to be very beneficial towards the lungs. One nutrient which has stood out is potassium iodide. Again, that form of iodine. It's shown to help thin the mucus. So when we get that very congested mucus in the lungs or in the throat, this nutrient helps thins it out so we're able to cough it up, so we're able to breathe easier. One of the main components in sea moss is mucilage. So this is a type of soluble fiber. So a fiber which becomes like a gel. The most common type of fiber in sea moss is carrageenan. Independent studies have shown that it can provide antiviral properties towards a broad spectrum of viruses, such as HIV, herpes, the basic cold and flu viruses, as well as it's shown to inhibit qualm sensing. So qualm sensing is when viruses communicate with each other or bacterium as well, and they send genetic material to each other to let them know that um, how to uh, become resistant to the agent which is trying to eradicate them. Carrageenan is able to inhibit that process so you're able to get over the infection quicker and recover. So this is very influential and it's something where um, I'd be interested to know how it has an effect in the gut as well, as no studies have been have explored this yet um, with carrageenan. This type of mucilage, as you from probably got the connection, is very valuable for the gut as well. So mucilage provides that coating to help soothe any inflammation. So this coating can help with a dry, irritating cough, can help with gastritis, which is a stomach inflammation, or colitis, which is inflammation in the colon. Its ability is because it um, goes over the mucus lining, so it allows the intestinal lining to heal and regenerate quicker. When we have inflammation in our gut, our ability to absorb nutrients becomes compromised. So this is where having soluble fiber is very valuable to helping encourage and heal up that tissue quicker. When we consume mucilage, it also doesn't break down. So that's why it's able to reach the colon, which is very valuable for a certain type of bacterium or a family of bacterium, sorry, called bifidobacterium. 
They eat this type of fiber and create short chain fatty acids. These acids help regulate the pH in the gut. They can help regulate bowel movements. They can help reduce inflammation. And they can help increase mucus in the gut. So you're probably wondering why you want to increase mucus in the gut when, when we have the cold and flu, you know, we're trying to get rid of it and, you know, breathe a little bit easier. But when we have mucus in the gut, it's our natural way to, um, to encourage that healing, healing process when, when there's it. So what they have found is that, uh, when, when we consume this type of soluble fiber, there is an increase in mucus as well as the bacteria help increase it as well. So the mucus, when we look at a cross section of the gut, acts as a protective lining. So the mucus is in the middle, the intestinal tissues on the bottom, and then the food and random articles are up at the top. This mucus, again, like as I stated earlier, protects the intestinal tissue, but also provides an opportunity for the intestinal cells, the enterocytes, to replicate and repair quicker, to heal up. Also, the mucus provides as a food source for certain types of bacteria. So this is where mucus sort of, uh, you know, mucilage type of plants or herbs are very valuable um, for the gut. Types, another, other examples are marshmallow, slippery elm, licorice root, these are fantastic to incorporate. And this is what I usually combine when someone's struggling with some digestive concerns, which there potentially could be some inflammation. When I have a client which is struggling with some low thyroid functioning, such as uh, experiencing fatigue, sensitivity to cold, weight gain, sluggish bowel movements, I lean towards majority of the time sea moss. This is a fantastic because it can reduce the inflammation, and all those nutrients available will help will eventually become absorbed and then help encourage and strengthen the function or strengthen the thyroid. Now, for the areas which um, I talked about at the beginning, which are of interest, is the blood sugar. These are new studies coming out, and they have found that the antioxidants in seaweed has shown to have a huge effect on certain enzymes and inflammation markers. So there is an antioxidant known as fucoxithin. This is what gives the, the seaweed its brownish green color. When someone consumes this primary, this antioxidant, it's shown to inhibit enzymes responsible for breaking down starches and sugars. This results in these molecules to stay in the gut and the blood sugar level to be balanced. Another study has looked at um, seaweed, uh, this type of seaweed being consider, consumed as a whole, and they found that it reduced inflammatory cytokines. These are cytokine, these are molecules released by fat tissue. When these molecules were reduced, the cells became less insulin resistant, which means that they were able to receive the sugar and the insulin more. Again, these are early studies, but very exciting. Also, these antioxidants have shown to be very influential towards the nervous system particularly the brain, as it's shown to reduce inflammation. Another study has shown that it's reduced um, a type of protein known as alpha-synulin. This type of protein has been connected with neurodegeneration conditions, for instance, Parkinson's. So the ability to reduce that protein is very exciting for a lot of researchers, as well as it's shown, um, as well as if we consume seaweed, our sea this type of seaweed daily, it's very nourishing for the nervous system. Now, I do have to mention that seaweeds are renowned for accumulating heavy metals. Brown seaweeds, particularly. When they did um, a sample of a seaweed, they found that arsenic was the highest. Um, to give you an example, it was 52 times over the human safety level. This is where it's very important that when you consume seaweed, um, especially as a supplement, that the company has tested for these heavy metals to make sure that they are safe. Um, they're within the safe limits. Herba Mama tests all their products and prior to being manufactured and sold. Also, if you're on any thyroid medication or on any thyroid treatments, it's always encouraged to speak with your healthcare provider before consuming CMOS as there may be some interactions. Overall, CMOS is a vast is a seaweed with a vast array of nutrients, supports various body systems and is a simple and effective way to support our health and well-being. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below. Please like, share, and subscribe to our channels. And in our next pod 
In our next podcast, I'm going to talk about a fuzzy herb known as mullet. Thank you so much for listening. See you all soon.